Hello everybody, it's Dr. Zeno with Whitney Zeno. With 15 minute fuel works in 15 minutes a day with your mind, body, and future. Okay, so we're at the airport um, on a Sunday. Jeez. We had a wild weekend. I'd like to share it with you guys. So when we're waiting for people to get on because we're just talking to ourselves right now. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> talking to each other. Oh, I can't share it if I was like on my Facebook. Oh, there we go. So we got one, one person. So, uh, so what we do is, uh, if you're, you're, of course, the podcast is listening to this. Thank you so much for uh, commenting and sharing. And everybody who is watching this, we got uh, cats. cats on, of hey, course. Cat. All right. So the way the new format is during the week, we're hitting definite concepts, and in the weekend, it's just kind of freestyle, have fun, and uh, no obligation on what we hey, do. Hey, Randy. What's up, Randy? Good to see you, buddy. All right. So, so today we're going to talk about the weekend, all right? crazy weekend. We have Mac Daddy over here. Right now we're in Denver, but it started off... Friday morning. Friday morning, was it? Yeah. Friday morning we flew to Clearwater, uh, Florida, so we flew into Tampa for the Health Experts Alliance seminar with uh, Dr. Isaac Jones, Dr. Axe, Jordan Rubin, Nick Kuzmich, uh, the Facebook ninja. And myself, I was like, the guy, he actually called me the secret speaker. Yeah, yeah, you were I, the I was surprise. Honored. I was a surprise, yes. Yeah, so I didn't know nice. that either. <laughs> so really cool, so we had a great time there. It does a, a lot of awesome stuff. Uh, we had a real fun, the beautiful place, wasn't it? The oh, window. yeah, the hotel was beautiful, the beach was awesome. I got a couple hours out there with some girls. Clearwater is clear really cool, too. Yeah, I don't remember yeah. it. Mm-hmm. For all you Scientologists out there. <laughs> we're um, not Scientologists. We're not. In fact, <laughs> well, let's talk about that. Oh yeah, it's all that. So we were driving. We were driving in the in the uh, Uber. Uber, and we got a cool guy. He was a cool guy. Was he? Yeah, he's like yeah. a jazz old jazz guy, and uh, and we just we got Mike because we know Clearwater was like the Scientology capital. Mike, so where's like the capital or the building? He's like everywhere. It's like so. I guess they they bought up everything. Well, they bought so much that he said that they get just got rejected on some of the land that they were trying to purchase, and they got rejected because the city said that they already owned yeah. enough. So again, we are not Scientologists. We're just saying we it was thought pretty, it was there. Yeah. So, anyways, and that's probably the one bit someone listened. Like, ah, oh, they ah. switched up. We're not. <laughs> um, so we spoke there. Then uh, that was fr- uh, Friday. Went there Saturday. I spoke. Then immediately, I wish I could have stayed there, but after I spoke, immediately we had to get out. We just barely got yeah. on. Well, you skipped plane. over Friday. Friday night we had oh, Friday night, yeah. the wine, the dry farms wine party, and that was great. Yeah. A nice little hangout. You did some videos with oh, yeah, Jay with Do- Davidson. Dr. Jay Davidson, he's the Lyme guy. Check him out. And also he's doing a parasite summit. Mm-hmm. And so we got to we got to learn some really other creepy things. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't stand talking to those guys because they make you feel like... Like, like you got, like, every parasite. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I had worms when I was... That night we would just sleep, we're like, oh, they're coming out, it's a full moon. <laughs> you ever, like, you ever have that talk when, you, when you're, when you're, uh, when you talk, like, and then you start itching? Like, I saw I was, like, itching. I was like, is that a worm? Is that a parasite coming out of my ear? <laughs> so, yeah, so we, we found out that we had, we probably had, like, every parasite in the world and... Uh, that was good. Always good podcast. So look look forward to that. Um, So Friday night was good. Then Saturday, uh, I did a a, a mastermind in the morning with some great docs on the beach. That was the coolest thing. So the sun's coming up. So I think, you know, I know you love the mountains, but I'm thinking we also need to go get a beach place. So we could say, what do you feel like? Beach or mountains? Okay. It was really pretty. I kind of missed that when I was seeing that there. Uh, then Saturday went, great, great speakers, Jordan spoke, Jordan Rimmy did a great job as usual, uh, and then Josh did a great job, and I spoke at uh, around 2-ish, 2 like o'clock. One thirty. Then we literally had to like jet out of there, so we flew out of there, and we flew to Denver, that was Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went to Whole Foods, we didn't get kicked out, that was yesterday, right? That was yesterday. See, like, I don't even know what date it is, and then, so we flew four hours, and we went back in time, because of the hour change. Yeah, and then today we went. Um, well, then last night, and then we got to the hotel. Then we hung out a little bit with Fred. Yeah. So we went to a lead coaching seminar with Dr. Fred Domenico, and also who was here. Uh, ben Lerner was here. Dr. Jim LeBrock was here. Brian Kappa was here, and um, Fred's girl, Fred's Bella. new girlfriend, and um, uh, Roberto Monaco. So today, Roberto Monaco and I spoke, which is fantastic. And I got to do the, the Hero Keynote. So I did the Hero Keynote yesterday and the Hero Keynote today. It was always good and great and fun. I did some videos with uh, Fortis, Jonathan McAleese, and some really awesome people. 
And then now we're sitting at Denver Airport to call it a weekend. So it was good like that. So uh, we had a great time. So let, let's go over some, uh, let's give some content here. So, and, and then, you know, we, and then plus in, in between, we had some different news I had, I got that I had to work through. So like guys, it's pull out. So the, the things went great here, but there's other things in our life that are going on that are, that are in the micro kind of suck, but we learned a couple things. So here's the concepts we learned. Don't get caught up in the false security. As, as long as someone could control your livelihood and your um, decisions, decisions. And I would say livelihood and professional security. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I have a job. Right. So I'm a chiropractor. But the the illusion of I have a great practice and I can take care of a lot of people. There's a board that could any day take away my license and in any day take away my livelihood. So when I realized, well, wait a second, the false illusion that everything is great in that, knowing that there's a company or a group of people that don't care about the patients, but they could literally control and, 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 and actually get in the way of my success or control my livelihood. So I realized that it was a good awakening because it's just not as a chiropractor or a dentist or a lawyer. It's like, in our lives, You'll never have true freedom. That's what it's about. I told Whitney, I text her, I'm like, we'll never have true freedom as long as there's some governing thing body. or body that could control your future success or livelihood. And I realized we got to arrive at that. And manipulates. And manipulate it, yeah. Manipulates so, you to pay fees for... Like a shakedown. Yeah, shakedown. Um, so the, I told Whitney, I'm like, moving forward, the only group I want to control our success and our livelihood is people like you guys. See, my patients, my patients should determine our value, success, and livelihood and future, right? Because not a board, the board doesn't even care about the people, but like, I want my patients to dictate like how our lives market, go for yeah. you know the market the patients of the market so knowing that and just I realized oh, wow you know I, I had a you know we're always peeling away layers and realizing that there's false identities and the false the false sense of security that there's a there's a board there's a there's a thing that in any day if they feel like it they could stop my entire they could just take it all away and I don't like that feeling and knowing that that that, that is a feeling of possibility I told my wife I'm like listen we got to rise above it so the only people I answer to is you guys out there and the people we care and love about and we move all up together and we don't have someone there is like you're too big that's a thing like it's like saying I'm too big or, or you don't fit in the mold then that's I can't have that so that's one huge thing even when you're watching right now whatever you're doing freedom means that you dictate your success and your livelihood. And the only one, and it's fair, the only one that could dictate if your success or livelihood goes up and down is the people you give value to, right? That's fair exchange. So if I give value to you and you give value to me, yeah, but to have someone say, I don't like the way you deliver the value, or I don't like the way, um, or we don't like the, the equipment, you, whatever that might be, and they decide how you take care of everybody, I can't, I can't like it. So it's not a matter of uh, what people want you to pay to shake down. It's, like, it's about living according to your values and your principles. So I can avoid, and I, I've been able to avoid a lot of things in my life, but it's like at the end of the day you live with yourself. And so even though it's easy and logical to make things go away, um, if, you, if you live according to your, 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 your values, because I feel if you, if you go against your values, it's like your, your soul's rotting. And I don't like that feeling one bit. So I kind of was working through that. And you'll all, all of you will be up to date on that, trust me, because I'll be the first one to deliver any crazy news to you guys. But at the same time, knowing that there was a chance that something life-changing could happen, it also gave me a sense of excitement and like, well, wait a second, if this was to happen, because I get to look at both ends, if this was to happen, it means I would have to go full hero into the new thing. And almost like, you know, when you want to make, the, when you want to make the leap and you're at the edge of the cliff and you're thinking, and you're like, you're, you're, you're still on the cliff, so you're still safe in your mind. And then you're, you're oscillating back and forth. And sometimes if you don't make the jump and it's, it's something meant for you, maybe life might kind of do a little, a little nudge and get you going. But, but instead of fearing what you'll lose, um, you get to experience and get excited what you're going to gain. And I always have backup plans. So we have cool things. So anyway, that was the, that was the, the big moment I want to share with you guys that in your life, if you say, well, wait a second, this, this person... Or, or governing body could actually step in the way of my future success and livelihood. That means you're you're still uh, you're in prison still. How about if it's a spouse? 
Ooh, I don't know. If I was if I was in your way. You don't have to use us and as an example. Well, well, the thing, well, I'm asking you because I want to hear your answer. Because if a spouse is in the way. Yeah, and a spouse, like, what if this one spouse is wanting to do something and the other spouse is like, no, I don't want you to do that. I'm, 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 or is that I'm, too, that's no, 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 I'm, 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 in my evolution of this, I'm still uncomfortable with saying you need to find something or somebody else. Mm-hmm. Because I'm still, I'm still not into the, you know, if that person is, um, like, abusing or something. Like if not someone, even abuse. No, just, no, just not, they, they not encouraging agree. that person to, like, step out and try something new. Because the yeah, other... Yeah, that's not me, is it? I encourage you, right? No. Because uh, I don't know. <laughs> no. hey, there's a guy I know. Hey, there's this guy I know. And uh, he eats six meals a day. And he likes to work out. And he wears his hero shirt everywhere. He's got a big nose. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just saying. Because I've had different conversations with with, uh, women specifically and even a couple of men who the other spouse didn't want them to... Um, branch out and because yeah. um, they they were secure in what their spouse was doing right now and it seems scary it's even been scary for me to be for you to kind of like go here and do this but I mean I I know that you're going to be successful no matter what you do but I can see how some spouses get they get scared so they kind of try to hold them back so do you think it's a communication thing yeah, like, see, with you know, the reason why you're having fun with it, I'm taking you with me. So yeah, imagine, yeah, imagine, exactly. Uh, well, and a lot of times, it wouldn't work if you were like, hey, see you later. You're like, I'll Roberto's like, on here, so Roberto's proud of us doing this. But here's the thing, Roberto, like, remember, Roberto's talk was about driven, being driven. And he said, you know, um, when you're not doing it, when you're not speaking your message in truth, somebody else is getting the attention of that person that might be pulling them away from the truth. So that's yeah. why I'm like, I, I wasn't going to do these on the weekends, but I'm like, dude, we're doing it. So I'm speeding up invitation. Um, yeah, how do you do that? So, I don't know, just a good well, well, thing I, I to think, think I think for me, what helped here was communication. Mm-hmm. Like, if you didn't if you didn't approve of me to do this, but the thing is, it would be weird because I would still continue to rot inside, and you yeah, would have saw that. Yeah. So that would have, so you not it would have, would have, you you wouldn't have got the best of me. So maybe there's communication, including the Being spouse, authentic with your spouse about what what you're feeling, and, and maybe given a time period, like, hey, listen. If you could give me just two months of this and see, and yeah. just and like I told you, hey babe, at any time you could hit the stop button and it's over. Mm-hmm. But then you saw me get better and better and say, well, and, like, what is it? I'm getting a better Chris, and the kids yeah. are getting a better dad. And then you started to get inspired by it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I know. So the thing, but there's there's some spouses that they're like, I can't. I'm at home with the kids, and I cannot mm-hmm. travel. I cannot be at work with them. I can't get inside that life. So how would you? So I think communication. Um, do you support me? And would you? And almost would you give me a little bit of time? Just, just, you know what I mean. So to let's test it out. Like, but what yeah. is the time? Is it a thirty days? It can't be a thirty or ninety days. Like, I think you just gave me grace by, by our, our, our relationship together. To know that I think you saw me come alive, mm-hmm. and yeah, then, for sure. and then from our history and seeing me come alive, you knew that was that was beneficial to you. Good place. Yeah, so it was selfish and selfishness. Yeah. Like, so mm-hmm. you became unselfish mm-hmm. to allow me to become selfish. So I could become unselfish, and then you could become selfish. Yeah, put, think about that. Now, right? Because as you were unselfish yes, to me, I and I do this, now you selfishly got a better husband, yeah, yeah. Uh, better experiences, mm-hmm. um, a unique opportunity. So what would you say for someone? Uh, a, a woman, do, I'll flip it. My husband won't support, or my wife won't support. So what would you tell, what would you say? Or what would you, I, I mean, this is, this is not stone, but what would you say? I don't know. I mean, I definitely think, like, talking it out more, spending more time together to talk about what your future likes and the, okay, your future looks like, and maybe the kind of future pace, okay, if I don't do this, what's it going to look like for my spouse? You know, like, the spouse is sitting together and saying, okay, if we continue on the track that we're going, because that's kind of helped us in our marriage. It's like, we future track divorce, and we're like, oh, that does not look good. You know, it's like, it may, it may feel like, oh we went out, but when we future pace what it looks like to be divorced, yeah. we're like, yeah, no, that's not what we want. So to make maybe future pace what it would look like if your spouse stayed in their unhappy situation and what's that gonna what are, what is that gonna look like in five or ten years, you know? Future pace is so, no no, it's such it's so important. I mean no, I do know. I said I don't I, know, I, but I do, I do it, know. <laughs> I do it automatically now, but it is mm-hmm. something that it is like a skill where it's like I remember telling you Mike with me I got to the point, I'm like, Whitney, I'm willing to sell everything 
and go back to live in a small apartment on debt. And I was like, Well, no. listen, listen. No, but I was at the point, I was at the point where I am willing to go all there because I do not want to stay right here. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, like I was willing to yeah. say, take it all, but get me out of here. Mm -hmm. And But I didn't know the next move to do. So it's like, but when, when I reached that point, you knew, and you knew, and I think that's it, because each partner knows the seriousness. You said, okay. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, he's like kind of rock realized. bottom. Like, there's, yeah. a, there's a little something's got to move, yeah. and i got to let him. And I said, babe, what should I do? And you said, well, I don't know, because you didn't know, and I didn't know. So. Well, yeah, and I think the important part for a spouse, too, is that we're not, you don't have to know, like, the end game of what it's going to look like. It's like only knowing like a glimpse of what the next steps are is okay. Like don't expect your partner to have the whole plan laid out and present it to you in this like businessy fashion. It's like you just have to know a glimpse of you know your next steps or a glimpse of what it could be and be inspired by that and kind of move on that versus um, versus having to know because I know that's like for me like security is very important so I want to know what What's the plan? How are we going to do it? But in this situation, we don't, and we're just kind of. And that's you know, very cool for you. You know, it's like Jim Tempo says, the magic carpet ride. You yeah. know. But but look at how the unknowns worked. You know, for us. Uh, you know, I went back today. You know, when we chose that, I, there was that 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 talking at that Reach Academy, and the, and the high, the VIP ticket was the most expensive, and it, was, it had the most risk, <laughs> meaning that like I had to talk in front of people, and then. It was, very, it was very, I didn't like it, it was very, I felt very insecure, and I said, let's do it. So when and we, mainly, you didn't feel insecure in your speaking abilities, you felt insecure because it was a new, it was a new experience, a new crowd. It was intimidating. A new, you were a little intimidated, yeah. Yeah, yeah because but, you're, but you're definitely a good speaker, obviously, but it was just a new, so you were even insecure in something that you are already good at. Yeah, so and that's, that's, well, I was, I was insecure in something that my identity was in. Yeah. So here's like one of here's here's one of my aces, and I was in school, and then that, then that had to step it up. I had to put after it, so we worked with Roberto more and get a twenty minute talk down to a three minute talk, so I could hopefully do a five minute talk. And then when I went there and did it, and then it opened up the doors. And then, you hear what Isaac said? He's like, I heard like that's the reason. Like Isaac wanted me to speak because of that event. But it just so when he went forward, even though we didn't know the unknowns, it, it opened up all these other areas. And so that's why I'm so for the potentialists. I'm so for that you don't have to know the, uh, the knowing the end is what causes us to procrastinate because we're yeah. waiting we're waiting to get the clearest yeah, picture yeah. no it's not clear yet oh no it has to be clear versus just going and doing and then allow allow the relationships and allow the opportunities and the and the ups and the downs and the and the things in the micro that look look pretty hard but in in the end you know it all work out so I'm so I and I, don't, I hate to use the leap of faith it's not a leap of faith it's just going and doing and like we're doing it yeah action. like we're doing this this is part of the action of it and sharing and talking it out and watching the new opp opportunity so we can leave a blueprint so for right now you know my system so far is you know embrace the hero mindset you guys know that then we need to maximize our superpowers that's our gifts and talents that we all have that we remember then we choose our vehicle so ours is video and then or your, yours could be, you know, video, writing, speaking. And then, but see, part of this program I'm going to make, it's that fourth leg, which is how do you monetize it? So, we, you know, we, we don't have anything monetized. So it's like, so we're developing that whole aspect. So then when we develop, I could then give it and show you how to do it. So so we're actually, we're, 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 we're documenting and going through this whole thing together. So you could see, like, wow, they really didn't have a clear, clear goal. But they definitely had, we didn't have a clear goal, but what we were clear about was today. Today was very clear, yeah. or it was very re reassuring, reaffirming. Other doors opened up. And well, then, and you you worked towards today. You know, yeah. it's like you you put effort into what you were doing today, yesterday, and the weeks before. But look how far that talk came, right? Oh, yeah, I, mean, I know it's crazy. Roberto was so, was so proud. Of yeah. He said back there, he's like, I'm so proud of him. <laughs> he's good. So, and that's the thing. So, what we're doing is like, you know, what is your story? What is your song? You know, the you don't have to. Like the camera, you know, we have Mac and everything here. It's like everybody's so into like, well, what's the return on investment on it? It's like, let's take money out of the equation. It's like, you know, Whitney has a husband that's on fire again. My friends see it. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody meets me. They're like, they see it in me. I haven't seen people in years. They're like, you change in a good way or I'm back. You know, Whitney's inspired and, you know, uh, you know. The, the team we I work get to live with. The coolest life ever. Huh? <laughs> I said I get to live the coolest life. Yeah, ever. Matt, Mac and the crew li lo love the life they're living, and uh, the millennial, millennial dream. You know, 
we're, we're, I feel we're given given the greatest gift. You know, Jim Rome said that you got to leave three things to people: that's your journals, that's your books, and that's pictures. And then video is all that in one. So this is documenting the journey, even for our kids that are great, great, great grandkids could always see. So it's like those things and happiness is so much more important because we're actually doing that thing without necessarily knowing the destination. And I think, you know what, even if we knew the destination, I think the day we hit the destination, we would get to pro <laughs> we would get to, we would begin, yeah. So it's, it's okay. I'm just, I guess we're, you know, before we sign off now, because the plane's ready to go, I think, uh, don't let, don't be, if you're in something that some other person could control your success or livelihood, then you're, you're living in a prison still. And don't let it fool you. So reach out and do something where you're the, the, the owner of the destiny, so to speak, yeah. and you could live your life. And the only one that you, you have to count on and be accountable is you and the person and the people that you give deliver your service to. Because that's true, that's true business, that's true economy. Yeah, yeah. Having some board or governing, and that could be the boss, it could be all these things. So this is why that entrepreneurial spirit that boss, you make besides you, besides you, Rob. <laughs> yeah, the Rob, You're Rob, like the you know Well, you Rob, I mean, Rob, yeah. Rob they are the boss now. Hey, Rob, you never know, man. You might be the boss sooner than you know, you know the way things are going with me. Um, anyways, uh, look into the false sense of security. Be your own um, driver of your destiny and um, start, start doing the thing now. Without You don't have to know the end result because the end result is an illusion because as soon as you get there, it's something else. Then it's something, yeah, that's funny because I was talking about that with um, Jimmy. It's like, you know, where we were 10 years ago, we were always focused on, okay, like, like our, you know, how many people are we going to reach? How many? Yeah. We had all these stats. I mean, we were never really into that, but our group was like all about stats and this, you know, that we are driven towards this, these couple of stats or whatever. We're now like our kind of our evolution now is like we're more into like the adventure or the magic carpet ride or like we're right. we're more a lot like it's more laid back we're more not that we're working less it's just it's more of the adventure it's a it. surrender it's sense? a surrendering adventure it's just a different it's a different yeah. feel it's not like we're waiting until we're like yeah we you've done a thousand talks and now you've accomplished you know it's it's just like a different be along for the ride and the adventure of life versus like waiting for this one thing because as soon as you got to those one things where were, you were depressed and you were on to the next thing you well, know it, it, like, it got when I hit my goal I had no emotional reaction mm -hmm. there was no celebration it was like, just okay, well, all you did was make another goal yeah. so, okay. but yeah I agree all right guys well thank you so much uh, we're gonna check out of Denver here soon have an amazing Sunday I will see you guys tomorrow see so, our boys soon. Yeah. so make sure you get on to uh, the one month to win and we're going to be starting on day six tomorrow. And uh, we'll have a good time. So have a great Sunday. Enjoy it. And uh, do something today that's, uh, that you love to do that gives you uh, juice, so to speak, mm -hmm. that, that charges your batteries and makes you feel alive. And God, something that's for your future. Absolutely. God bless. The 15 minute fuel for just 15 minutes a day will be your mind, body, and your future. All right, you should hit the button. There it goes.